Patch notes are really important for the user to understand what's happening behind the scenes of an application, but sometimes you see things like this. Fix some miscellaneous common crashes, as was seen in a recent Steam update. But what does miscellaneous common crashes actually mean? It kind of just means anything. Like, that's the reason why you write it. You just don't want to list out every single individual crash. But recently, over on his personal blog, a Valve employee actually laid out a really weird, and in my opinion, very interesting problem that Steam has had. Improving Steam client stability on Linux, set emph, and multi-threaded environments. This is actually a number of different crashes, but they're all related to one specific problem. Bad handling of environment variables. The one change that made the most significant impact to Steam client stability on Linux has been a revamping of how we're approaching the set emph and get emph functions, which as you might expect, set and get environment variable respectively. One of my colleagues rightfully dubbed set emph the worst Linux API is such a simple, common API available on all platforms that it was a little difficult to convince ourselves just how bad it is. I highly encourage anyone who writes software that will run on Linux at some point to read through Rachel By The Bay's very engaging post on the subject. Let's go and do that. Don't set emph in multi-threaded code on glibc. As we'll see in just a moment on another post, um... Not necessarily just if you're writing C code. Remember in 2014 when I wrote about getting stuck if you called basically anything between fork and exec if you have the threads active. That is another blog post, multi-threaded forking and environment access locks. The general idea was that thread one calls unset emph, grabs a lock, and then thread two forks lazily copying the process and copying the lock in the process then the child process calls unset emph or set emph and tries to grab the lock, finds it already set, and then hangs forever. If you read that post, you might have started thinking, oh, well at least it's thread safe. Well, no, not so much. While those functions won't stomp on themselves, there's plenty of badness which can and will happen if you call them. The best one is that you can make get Emph crash, not setting an environment variable, reading an environment variable. This is due to everyone's favorite race condition, this time with set emph. If you want to go and test it for yourself, here is a bit of code you can go and run on your system. We are just going to believe that it runs because that's what happens. If you dig through the remains, you'll find that one of several things may have happened. If it crashed right here, EP, that being this right here might be pointing at a form location of environ, which is no longer part of your segment. You just read off the end of your memory, segfault. It might crash another way too. This is a pointer to a char pointer, so it's supposed to have a bunch of pointers to char pointer buffers. One for each var equals val pairing, so one for each environ variable being set. What if that region has been reused and now contains a bogus pointer into the weeds? Yep. Segfault. There might be a couple more ways, but you get the idea. You're dead in the water. Now you might say, well, I know that set emph is not safe in a multi-threaded environment. I would never go and use that. But what about any of the libraries that you call? Are they all using it in a thread safe way, as in not using it in a multi-threaded environment or setting things up before they start doing the multi-threaded activity? If you don't know, you can't trust any code, basically. Really, you can't be sure who's going to be poking around in there. So all you can do is not call set emph in your own code and hopefully don't cause any problems. If for some reason you do need to set something up in your environment for an eventually multi-threaded program, you'd better get it out of the way before you kick off any threads and then leave it like that forever. Don't try to change it while the program is running. Now, absolutely none of this is new, and people experienced with glibc know about this problem, but they kind of forget about the problem every couple of years, and then people have to rediscover that you can't use set emph in a multi-threaded environment. Now, here's another post that expands upon the problem. Set emph is not thread safe, and C doesn't want to fix it. That's not 
necessarily the case now. There actually is some work I'll show you in just a moment. You can't safely use the CSetEmp or UnsetEmp functions in a program that uses threads. Those functions modify global state and can cause other threads calling getEmp to crash. This also causes crashes in other languages that use those C standard library functions such as goes os.setEmp, there is a go issue here, and rust set var, also another issue. I ran into this in a Go program because Go's built-in DNS resolver can call C's get address info, which uses environment variables. This cost me two days to track down and file the Go bug. Sadly, this problem has been known for decades. On the Go side, there is still an open issue. On the Rust side, the issue is closed because they can't address the problem, so I was like, ah, just don't do it, and we'll get rid of the environment, pretty much. This is a flaw in the POSIX standard, which extends the C standard to allow modifying environment variables. The most infuriating part is that many people who could influence the standard or maintain the C libraries don't see this as a problem. The argument is that the specification clearly documents that set env cannot be used with threads. Therefore, if someone does this, the crashes are their fault. Again, that applies if you're writing it in your own code, but if there is other code that you are using, well, you gotta check every bit of code you use, and that's not super scalable. We should apparently read every function specification carefully, not use software written by others, and not use threads. These are unrealistic assumptions in modern software. I think we should instead strive to create APIs that are hard to screw up, and evolve as the ecosystem changes. So why is setEnf not thread safe? The biggest problem is that getEnf returns a character pointer with no need for applications to free it later. One thread could be using this pointer when another thread changes the same environment variable using setEnf or unsetEnf. And this is fine in the C standard where you can't set the environment variables. But in POSIX you can. Even worse, put env adds a character pointer to the set of environment variables. It is explicitly required that if the application modifies the memory after put env returns, it modifies the environment variables. This means applications can modify the value passed to put env at any time without any synchronization. As a final problem, environ is a null terminated array of pointers that an application can read and assign to. This is how applications can iterate over all environment variables. Accesses to this array are not thread safe. However, in my experience, many fewer applications use this than get env and set env. However, this does cause some libraries to not maintain the set of environment variables in a thread safe way since they directly update this table. Now, more recently than that blog post, there is some work in glibc being done to address this problem. It's under review, it's been open for a couple of months, so I guess we'll wait and see if that actually happens. But until then, Valve's gotta work around the problem. Our policy up to now had been to minimize the usage of these functions, and hope for the best. <laughs> the Steam Clank Legs basic crash information, the reports have a backtrace of where the crash happened and what other threads were doing. On Linux, this data is very noisy. There is so much variation across distributions, driver versions, window manager choices, extensive user customization, etc. The reports do not bucket as nicely as they do on Windows. I would not be surprised if this is actually part of the reason why they wanted a Steam Deck, right? If a crash happens on a Steam Deck, most people running the Steam Deck aren't installing Windows, aren't installing GNOME or Hyperland. They're running KDE, they're running the thing they get directly from Valve. And it's all the same hardware with the exception of drives and screens and some of them, but most of the same hardware. So what they get as a stack trace is going to be a lot easier to work with, so if there are crashes on the Steam Deck, they're probably a lot easier to track down. After a concerted effort to improve our grouping, a pattern emerged. It turns out that if you call setemp in a multi-threaded program, sometimes you'll crash outright, but that's pretty rare. That happens, but the volumes we saw were always low. 
We found that other threads would blow up though, usually with a SIG-6, that is a terminate, shortly after calling get -emp themselves. The backtrace of such crashes were all over the place and could not be easily tied to a single cause, but there were several orders of magnitude, more of those that we had direct set -emp crashes. That is the joy of a race condition. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it happens in whole different places. Fun! There is no silver bullet to address this. These APIs are thread safe on Windows and Mac, so developers use them. Mac opted to leak the strings rather than crash. See bugs in the macOS documentation for get emp. If we go string down here somewhere. Ah, uh, bugs, here it is. Successive calls to set emp or put emp assigning a differently sized value to the same name will result in a memory leak. The FreeBSD semantics for these functions, namely the contents of value are copied and the old values remain accessible indefinitely, make this bug unavoidable. Future versions may eliminate one or both of the semantic guarantees in order to fix the bug. Now this is how Valve tried to address the issue in Steam. It's not 100% dealt with, but mostly. We removed the majority of set emp calls. It was mostly used when spawning processes and refactoring to use XEVPE to pass down a prepared environment is an all-around improvement. We removed how much we rely on get emp mostly by caching the calls. There is still an uncomfortable amount of it, but it's in the OS libraries at this point. X11, XCB, Dbus, etc. and we continue reducing its usage. For the few remaining set emp use cases that could not be easily refactored, we introduced an environment manager that pre-allocates large enough value buffers at startup for fixed environment variable names before any threading has started. So it does end up using a bit more memory than it otherwise need to, but it ensures that if you do mess around with environment variables, you're going to have the memory space already allocated there and nothing else is gonna run over that space. This last change is what really made a difference for us. Large enough buffers are pre-allocated at startup. The targeted environment variables exist for the whole process lifetime, but start as an empty string. Wherever a set emp would previously happen, we call get emp first to make sure the buffer hasn't moved and use a direct string copy to update the value. That's not a completely reliable fix, a third party library could still call set emp and trigger a crash. There's still a risk of data races, but we've observed a significant reduction in termination volumes. Most of the time when you have a bug, it's going to be in your code, right? Most of the time is not going to be in like a system library or a third party library or anything like that. But sometimes it is. Sometimes there are weird design decisions from a time before multi-threaded code. And things are not exactly the most um, sensible approach. But luckily they're being worked on. So hopefully that all gets fixed. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Have you had Steam just randomly crash on you? You probably have, and you probably never looked at the log, but have you noticed it's been crashing less? I'd love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Don't read my memory.